All right, it is that time. It's 11 o'clock, which means another Safe Water webinar with Kelly T, Kelly hey. B, Mike Rust, who's gonna appear to you. There he is. <laughs> Good morning. Hey. What's happening, guys? How are you? How are you? Doing good, doing good. Well, thank you everybody for joining us. Um, excited to see we've got about 200 people with us today. Great. Um, I recognize some of them. Uh, yeah, some of our, some some of friends, our friends. Yeah. So um, today, uh, first of all, we're gonna talk about uh, how to respond to COVID-19. Obviously created a unique situation inside of dentistry. Um, and there's some pieces to water that we need to discuss. So uh, we'll do that. Uh, through all that, we're in this together. So the team at ProEdge wants you to know we're here for you, to support you. We're so glad you joined us today. And then we're gonna go deeper into uh, just being 100% in step with CDC recommendations. So without further ado, I get to start off by bragging about um, my, two my two pals here, Kelly T. Mike Russ. So Kelly Timmons, she's our senior consultant and education specialist. She's been with ProEdge for about three years. Um, uh, background in nursing. Uh, and she has helped thousands of practices across the country improve their, their water test results and learn best practices and understand how their products work most effectively. She's also known as Kelly T uh, to distinguish herself from me, Kelly B. And that's because at ProEdge, even though we're a small team, we've got multiple mics, multiple Kellys, multiple Marks. Uh, <laughs> there's something, there must be something in the water. <laughs> <laughs> good. good one, good one. <laughs> Pun intended. Um, so Mike Rust, um, regional sales manager for ProEdge Dental Water Labs. He's been with, with us since the beginning. Uh, almost 10 years, has uh, uh, over 30 years in the dental industry, knows a lot, and um, in terms of water lines specifically, has probably spent more time uh, it, it, getting his hands dirty, so to speak, with dental water safety. And so uh, he has a lot to teach us. He's learned from some of the best in the industry, taught Kelly and T and I everything that we know. Um, so Mike, glad you're here with us. Yeah. I'm I'm Kelly B, Kelly Birschbach. Maybe I'm just Kelly B because Birschbach is so hard to say, but <laughs> um, I'm the marketing guy. I've been with ProEdge for a couple of years and uh, super excited to, to join you guys today. So I am a, no, I'm not a woman. <laughs> Kelly, you're. Every time, every time, every time. You're a woman on a mission. Tell it, us this about is your my mission. slide. This is this is this is this Kelly slide. <laughs> so yes, I, I truly truly have become and again learned everything from Mike. So thanks thanks for the introductions, Kelly. But um, yes, I am. I am. A, I have become a, a woman on a mission, um, and just kind of want to go over the the basic objective of, of today. Uh, we want to arm you with as much knowledge as possible to uh, to be able to obtain and maintain your water lines. We want to really teach you how to become a waterline expert. Um, we know that it's going to go way beyond this this forty five minute webinar, but we want to arm you as much with as much knowledge as information as possible. Um, we want to help you prepare your office for COVID nineteen. Uh, getting a lot of calls on what do we do, how do we handle this shutdown. So we want to just kind of answer those questions as best we can for you and. And, and finally, and most importantly, we want to, to honor you and let you know how much you're appreciated. Uh, there, I, I, don't, I don't see all the people that are on here, but I know it's from all, you know, all over the den de dental uh, industry. And we just thank you for everything that you do, whether you're a dentist, assistant, hygienist, whatever, sales, marketing, whatever you are, we appreciate you. We know how hard your job is. And um, just thank you for being here. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a tough time in dentistry, tough time for the world, and um, we really do appreciate each and every one of your roles. Uh, we, we really do believe we are in this together uh, as an industry to uh, help everybody thrive and come out of this stronger. So we want you to know we're available uh, as normal. Uh, we have a limited, very limited staff that actually are in the lab right now, um, but uh, all our safe water specialists are able to work from home. So you can reach, reach Kelly T or 
or any of the other uh, team members uh, for consulting or questions, getting your questions answered. We're not gonna cover every single thing as Kelly T said in this webinar. There's unique things in each dental office. Um, so I encourage you to, after this, reach out, uh, contact Kelly T directly and her team because uh, there'll be there'll be questions that we don't get to or things that we need to clarify. And so we're here for you. Uh, ProEdgeDental.com slash COVID-19. Some of you may have gotten to this web webinar through that page, but just so you know, that's available. It's got more resources um, and we'll highlight a couple of those today. Uh, utilize the Q&A. Um, so we've done, I don't know, four webinars so far this month. And um, the Q&A has lasted a long time because a lot of people have questions. Uh, we're here until the end of those questions. So utilize them. We'll, we'll try and answer some of them through the process or through the webinar, uh, but we'll spend a dedicated time at the end. You're welcome to stay as long as you wish, uh, but we'll go through every single question that comes in. Um, so use, utilize that Q&A box as opposed to the chat box. That just makes it a little bit easier for us. Um, we're going to be able to provide CE today, but it's not through kind of the live webinar normal process. So we apologize. We wish there was a, a, a better way to do this, but we do have a, a way for you to get free CE today to continuing education credits in infection control. Uh, that link will be given at the end. Uh, you'll get a downloadable ebook via that link and then uh, be able to access a CDE world quiz um, that's a part of this, this uh, ebook that uh, we're a part of. Um, we'll also highlight the answers through, uh, through the webinar, either it'll be on the screen or it'll be what we talk about. So it's up to you though, to pay attention. Okay, it's up to you. <laughs> so uh, Kelly T, we're gonna jump into it. Um, Mike Russ, we're gonna jump into it. I think actually, Mike, you're gonna start. Uh, COVID-19 and dental unit water lines. What's true? What's fluff? There's lots of concerns out there. Uh, let's let's kind of set us all straight. Thanks, Kelly, very much. Yeah. Um, uh, let's. Uh, what I thought I'd uh, do is uh, ask the experts, and so I went straight to Dr. Shannon Mills, who who's kind of the author of the CDC guidelines way back when, and he's kind of the guy that. John Molinari goes to when you have questions on water lines. He's the godfather of, uh, of dental unit water lines. He's he's the he's above all the other smart people that we know. And uh, we I just asked him a couple of questions. Uh, can my tablet, can my straw, or my cartridge kill the coronavirus? And um, I'm going to paraphrase him because he's he's. But the answer is we don't know. It hasn't been tested, and we and I think the way he said it is we don't really need to. We don't really need to know because the nature of the coronavirus. Uh, can my shock product kill the coronavirus? It's not known. Some of the products that, some of the types of products that are used to uh, uh, to shock dental unit water lines uh, also are components in surface disinfectants that can kill coronavirus on surfaces. But remember, uh, dental unit water lines are a different uh, you know, it's different than surface disinfection. Dental unit water lines is, uh, you know, it's it's water. So that's the question. Can COVID populate dental unit water lines? And Dr. Mills essentially said it's very unlikely. And the reason he said that is because he, what he would be, and again, I'm paraphrasing. I don't want to put words into a smart guy's mouth. But we, uh, he says, we don't need to worry about uh, COVID in dental unit water lines. COVID's an airborne pathogen. It's not waterborne. It's a virus which doesn't replicate well in water. COVID's mode of transmission, as we know, is through droplets expelled from a host. And yes, there's going to be some phobia and maybe some rightful uh, fear, some rational fear about aerosols coming out of this. As we all go back to work, uh, our patients are going to be paying attention to aerosols, maybe a little more so than they, certainly more so than they ever did, and certainly in the short term when we get right back to work. So they're gonna be looking at that at those aerosols uh, and they're gonna be thinking about them. So, but there is a positive uh, message. You know, Kelly and Kelly and I, and all of us at ProEdge, uh, we think there's a very positive marketing message to coming out, coming out of this, that if you guys are here, by the way, if you're here, we commend you for being here and being doing this professional development during this downtime. 
but uh, you're smart to be paying attention to infection control. When we get back in the office and go back to work, we wanna be making all of our infection control procedures front and center. We wanna be showing off. We wanna be bragging a little bit about all the stuff we do. Yeah, these instruments are sterile. Yeah, we test our autoclave every week. Yeah, our water is safe. There's a positive marketing reason to shock, test, and treat, and to go and to learn this protocol that we're going to talk about today. Um, your patients will have increased awareness, and uh, we think it's a great marketing opportunity, and it's a great way for you guys to show you know, you're, you're, that you're prepared. So there is a problem, though, with that COVID is presenting for dental unit water lines. Kelly T., what's that problem? Yeah, so, so, so I kind of answered all the questions that, that are coming in, the calls that are coming in and the concerns about the COVID actually being in uh, dental unit water lines or in the, the water bottles itself. And it's not so much that that we're worried about. The problem is um, biofilm, right? So water lines themselves, they are the perfect place for bacteria to grow uh, it, it, when the world is normal. So even in the busiest offices, the water in those little tiny water lines sits stagnant most of the time. COVID, uh, we have an extended period of time where we're not using our office or we're not using certain operatories. So water is sitting even more stagnant. The stagnation creates more of a problem for the biofilm, the bi biofilm development. Uh, and then that biofilm, that is the problem in dental unit water lines. That's where pathogenic what bacteria will grow. That's what's what cause, um, you know, dangerous things to our patients, right? So mycobacterium abscessus, uh, pseudomonas, legionella, that's what we're worried about. Not so much the, the COVID-19, again, so much is unknown about that, but the problem is the stagnation creating the biofilm, which is already a problem, but now with extended period of non-use, it's, it's even more of a problem. So that's, that's what, what the problem is. Um, so, so we have a, a specific protocol uh, to help you um, during the shutdown and then also to reopen. Got it. Well, let's let's dive into that. What is that protocol, Kelly? So, so no, across the board, whatever product you're using, we really want you to empty your water bottles. Uh, we want you to get all that water out of there, put your, your water bottle back on the unit, and then purge your lines dry, as dry as possible. Uh, prior to reopening, you're going to want to shock uh, lines. And shocking is just using a strong chemical to clean out the insides of those water lines. So Mike kind of talked about some shock, some shock products that are good for surface disinfectants too, but we'll go into shocking you know, a little bit later, but shocking prior to reopening and then also testing to make sure that that shock was effective so that your lines and your water are safe for your patients when you do reopen. Um, so purging, just kind of dive a little bit deeper into that because people do ask. Um, again, so you're gonna empty your bottle put the bottle back on and then you're just gonna purge your lines as dry as possible. Um, and that's the, just keep pushing air through there. We just want them to be as dry as, as, you, as you possibly can get them. Uh, after, and, and this is across the board. No, if you're using tablets, whether it be the blue tab, ICX, Citrocil, no matter what you're using, uh, it's, it's important we're gonna, during this extended period of time, again, this is specifically for COVID, tablets, whatever tablet you're using, Empty your bottle and purge. Um, with Dentapure straw, so that's the iodine-based straw. Uh, you wanna take the straw, again, empty your bottle. But you're gonna take that straw off. You wanna wipe it down um, and then put it into a Ziploc bag and then date, date the bag that you take, you know, date the time, put the operatory that you got it from. Also, you wanna date the installation date when you first put that straw on there. And you wanna store those Store those, those straws in somewhere away from the light. So not next to a window, um, maybe in a closet or just somewhere that's not gonna be in, in direct sunlight. And again, uh, prior to um, opening up, you wanna shock those lines, prior to putting your straw back on, shock your lines and then test. Um, and we'll go into to how to shock with the, the straws in a little bit too, but uh, with Stericil straw, so that's the silver-based low level antimicrobial straw, very popular straw little bit different protocol. Uh, same thing though, we wanna empty the bottle, empty the water out and you're gonna purge your lines dry. Um, but you're gonna put that bottle, you're just gonna leave the straw in place, you're gonna put your bottle, the bottle back onto the, the unit and then you're just gonna leave it there. Uh, and then again, before you start seeing patient again, patients again, before routine, you wanna make sure you shock and test to make sure that 
that you the shocking was effective. Um, so say you're, you say you have most some of your operatory shut down, so you've got all those purge and, and whatnot, but you have one operatory open to see emergencies. Uh, the thing is, if you're not using maybe one of those lines, it, it's not going to make a difference to purge that line. So if you have that operatory open, don't purge your lines. Just just flush like you normally would. Keep using your straw. Keep using your tablet. Whatever you're using as a low level antimicrobial. Uh, but we really, really um, suggest, recommend flushing more often. So you want to do your normal two to three minute flush in the morning. Flush, definitely flush in between patients, but your patients may be spread out a little bit further. So flush as often as you can throughout the day, um, just to kind of keep that antimicrobial flowing. And even if you're not using a line, so say you're not using that handpiece or you're not using a Capitron, flush it, make sure you're keeping it flushed so that, that the lines don't sit stagnant. Um, and then we, oh, dummy, the dummy straws, sorry about that. So then prior to uh, starting back up, shocking. So this is what I was talking about using that strong chemical that's, going, that's not ingestible. So the, the tablets and the straws, those are low level antimicrobial that we can use in our patients. Shocking is using that strong chemical to clean the insides of your lines out. Uh, we recommend using a product made by Crosstex called Liquid Ultra. It's the pink stuff. It used to be called Sterilex. Same product. Uh, your supply company may have it under Sterilex uh, or a diluted bleach solution. Um, if you are using a one of the straws that I mentioned, so uh, the Dentapur straw, uh, Stericil straw, the Hue Freeze, any straw, you want to make sure that you do not shock through those straws. We have what we call a dummy straw and we're giving them out complimentary. So just let me know if you need one. They're just an empty take up tube that allows you to shock your lines and just reach out to us and, and we'll make sure that you get one if you need them. Yeah, so I've got one here. Um, you just call us, we'll set it to you complimentary. Uh, real simple, basically you're gonna take your straw off and then you're gonna replace it with this. And so it's just a simple uptake tube um, that uh, you can now use to grab that shock solution, send it through your lines, because you do not want to send shock through these. Um, through these. Now, if you have a Stericil straw, you can use Citrusil shock. Uh, it's just not a product that we would recommend in most cases. It's just, uh, we feel like Liquid Ultra uh, is just a stronger product. Diluted bleach, stronger product, tend to be more effective. Um, but it comes with instructions, super simple. Uh, call us, we'll, we'll send it to you. Um, um, oh, sorry, Kelly. Real quick, just wanted to point out, I, I didn't say, so, you know, even when we purge those lines, I get this question a lot. Um, you know, why do we have to shock if, we're, if our lines are dry? And that's a great question. So even with purging, there's never a way to get them 100% dry. So it's in moist environments, bacteria can still grow. So that's why we suggest shocking. It's really, really important. Um, the water, you know, in there is not going to be sitting as stagnant, but the, the environment is still moist and so bacteria can grow. So that's why shocking is very, very important. Uh, and then testing prior to return to, to routine care. Um, really, really important. You want to make sure that your lines are safe, that your water is safe, and that, that you're meeting those CDC guidelines of uh, 500 CFUs or less. Now, um, we had just a quick question about purging. Mike, how do you purge? What does purge mean? Well, so there are most dental uh, units may have a may have a purge or a, I call a flush toggle switch on them, and uh, you you can use that. Um, but what that does is sends only water through the lines. But, but but to purge, by and large, by the way, you can check with the manufacturer's instructions for use for several shock products. Will tell you how to do it. Uh, like Monarch Mint to Clean, and I think Liquid Ultra even tells you how to drain the lines if you want to. Um, but um, the way it works is you can take the bottle off, dump all the water out of it, put the bottle, put an empty bottle back on, and then either flush toggle, and if that doesn't, and that could work and should work, or if you don't have one of those, just hit the air water syringe until it runs dry and spits a little bit of aerosol until it, there's nothing but air coming out of the water line. And then with the, uh, you just hit the rheostat or the, or the, foot, the foot pedal on your high-speed handpiece lines and, uh, and drain the water from your high-speed handpiece lines. And we, we recommend that you try, you, you check your low-speed lines as well. Mm, uh, good point. To verify good point. that sometimes, most of the time when they were installed, if you told the installer that this is a slow speed, 
we're never going to use water in it, then they may have capped it off. But more often than not, the water's just turned down or off, and there may be water in those lines. And if so, it's pretty stagnant. You'll want to shock that line and treat it like a high-speed handpiece line. Uh, and then even and then when you go back to the office, you can, you know, take them out and have have them uh, capped off if you ever if you're never going to put water through them. So purging, getting all the water out of the lines. So if there's any water in those lines, uh, we haven't quite purged. So uh, that's the goal. End goal is not having water inside the line so they can be dry. Now, Kelly T, what about if you're not using a tablet or a straw? What do you do then? If you got one of these other kind of treatment solutions? So, yeah. So, so some people may be hooked up just directly to the city or they may have a, a, an, an inline municipal cartridge like the Sarasil cartridge or the Dentapir cartridge. Uh, if you don't have a water bottle system, um, there's limited options in what you can do. So if, if you have the cartridge and you don't have a water bottle, or if you have the centralized system and you don't have a water bottle, we recommend that you retrofit at this time. Um, getting a water bottle uh, on your unit um, is it's about $200 a chair, Mike. Is that what you're... you're yeah, that's right. Yeah. So it, it's a great time to be able to do that. And that will allow you to be able to shock your lines when needed. Um, and this is, is a great time to take to, to take opportunity there to take advantage of that. Um, with, with the inline municipal cartridges, there's if you don't have a bottle, you can, it can't shock. Um, but regardless, you need to you need to test prior to seeing patients. With the centralized systems, we you know prior to, to opening back up, we recommend that you change the filters, uh, that you have them sanit sanitized. And uh, I, I believe you have to have a maintenance technician come in to have them sanitized, but it's, it's, it's possible to do and, and, then, and then test. Uh, but having those bottles on your units will make it so much easier to shock. And uh, we are just strong believers and advocates for water bottles on your units. Yeah, it's never fun to say, hey, we, we think you should retrofit. Um, but if, you know, both, with both of these solutions, generally we don't see long-term success. And so without long-term success, as soon as a test fails, there's nothing you can do. And so if you don't have water bottle systems, so that's why we love the water bottle systems. That's why we recommend them. Um, if you're getting good results with these two solutions, great. Um, um, but if not, consider retrofitting. Now, Kelly, uh, this is an important consideration in this time because of so much, so much of the focus is on emergency care. What, what do we need to do right. now? Yeah, so critical all the time, but especially now since, it's, yeah, since most offices are just seeing emergency um, patients. And, and granted, not every, uh, every emergency that comes in is going to be considered uh, a surgical procedure or whatnot. But if you are doing surgery, it's, it's really, really important that you're using sterile water from a sterile source, from a sterile delivery system. Uh, you can't just you know, grab a, a bottle of sterile water and pour it into your water bottle and then just use your air water syringe like normal. Once you pour that sterile water into that water bottle, it's no longer sterile. So really, really important that you use like a bulb syringe, a single use device, something that you that you can toss afterwards, something that is sterile um, if, you, if you're doing any kind of surgical procedure. And CDC kind of lays out what exactly, you know, the definition of what a surgical procedure is. But basically, if you're exposing pulp or if it's a bloody procedure of any, of any kind, err on the side of caution, use sterile water from a sterile, sterile source. Reason one of the reasons why we bring this up in February, I don't know if you guys saw, but um, multiple news outlets, obviously big big news outlets, um, reported on a New Jersey dentist that was suspended after 15 patients got endocarditis, um, and one of them, one of those patients, ended up uh, passing away. And so uh, one of the the complaints again hit against him was that he was not using sterile water for uh, surgeries and sterile delivery systems. Um, he was warned multiple times about that, and and uh, continued to do that. And he had a number of other infection control breaches as well, but uh, we just cannot stress that enough. Sterile water, sterile delivery systems for uh, surgeries. Right. So a little bit kind of going to that, Kelly, why is bacteria in our water lines a problem? You know, and I, I like to put a picture uh, on the why. I think kind of telling a story and giving, giving you know, a reason or, or a reason of the why. And, and so I like to, to paint up paint a picture. And so this sweet little girl is is one of the faces of the why, of one of the faces of the why behind behind waterline maintenance. Uh, this is Mimi Morales. 
She is one of children infected who was infected in the Anaheim outbreak. Uh, she was a seven-year-old little girl who went in for a routine pulpotomy. Um, after that, she developed a serious infection in her mouth. Uh, she had to have surgery to remove part of her jawbone and several teeth. Uh, she was hospitalized for more than a month. Uh, and she, I mean, poor little thing, she had to receive heavy doses of, of antibiotics. And, and guys, we're not talking about amoxicillin. We're not just talking about penicillin, which I'm sure they tried every, every antibiotic. But finally, what they got to work was the antibiotic that was created to treat leprosy. So a heavy duty antibiotic that comes with side effects on its own for this, this sweet little girl um, and, and many, many others. So this is, this is the why, she is the why and so many other little faces like hers are the why. Now, Mike, we were involved in the aftermath of Anaheim, the Orange County Department of Health reached out to us asking if we could test this practice's water. And so we kind of were able to follow you know, what, what happened after Mimi came in and just take us through what the timeline looked like. Yeah, I'd say we were pretty intimately involved in, uh, in what happened in Anaheim until, you know, at the very beginning, when as soon as they found there was an infection, they did reach out to us. We spoke to the people from the Orange County Department of Health. Um, Kelly, I love the way you tell that story. Mimi Morales is a good picture of, uh, or a good face for it. She was the, one, the first of the, uh, one of the first kids to show up at Children's Hospital of Orange County. And it was a miracle that the doctor that was on call that weekend was a pediatric infectious disease expert. And she said it was the worst case she'd seen. And like you said, she tried, they tried all these different antibiotics and none of them worked. Um, but, a, but another miracle, this would be a great episode of CSI or NCIS, one of those, it could be a really kind of a cool show because the story is so dramatic. You know, a month later, the same doctor's on call on another weekend and a second kid shows up with similar symptoms and the doctor starts doing a forensic history. Uh, ask him, you know, did you travel outside the country? Did you go someplace where the water wasn't bad? Did you go someplace? Did you go to the dentist? And here's the scary thing about this bacteria that grows in Delhi water lines is that the incubation period is so long. It could be over 400 days. So imagine it's your daughter or granddaughter that, uh, develops a big infection in her mouth. You take her to the ER and they say, did you go to the dentist? You're gonna say she hasn't been to the dentist in a year. I'm not saying that happened, but it could happen because the incubation period, the average incubation period of mycobacterium abscesses is 90 days, that's three months. You're not gonna think about, oh, it's the dentist that did this, right? That's why we haven't heard more about this before. And, and that's probably why it'll happen again. Anyway, Anaheim and the third kid shows up and then a 10th kid and then fourth and a fifth and a sixth. When it gets to be 10 kids, it's on the local news. When it gets to be 20 kids, it's on the regional news. When it gets to be 30 kids, it's on CBS Morning and NPR. When it gets to be 72 kids, they shut the website down. So we didn't even know how many more children were uh, infected. Uh, and it all happened at the same dental office, mostly, you know, from the same procedure. And then and the reason they shut it down is because there was lawsuits ongoing. And uh, well, Kelly, Kelly B, why don't you give us an update on the on the, what's going on there? Yeah, so um, it ended up being 200 kids involved. Uh, there's now 200 plaintiffs involved in that litigation. Uh, it's set for bellwether trial this month. My my guess is that's uh, that may be delayed given everything that's that's happening right now. But uh, it was set for for April. Um, and it looks very similar to the case in Atlanta, which was a year uh, prior, 35 patients uh, also got mycobacterium abscesses, also from a dental procedure, uh, and litigation is ongoing there. What we've heard at uh, the OSAP boot camp this last winter, basically Atlanta's looking to wait until uh, Anaheim happens. Uh, reality is it's, uh, it's probably going to be a, Brit a large settlement or a lar large, uh, you know, it could be one of the biggest in dentistry. And so Atlanta that's what the expert witness said. Yeah. yeah. At the Atlanta, they're waiting because they're expecting a big number in Anaheim. So, uh, and ProEdge gets calls every few months. Um, usually about every quarter or every six months, we'll get a call with uh, another case. Uh, there was a single case in California a few months back, a doctor uh, in Hawaii who got uh, mycobacterium obsessus, a dentist. Mm -hmm. Um, we've had several other calls. So we know this doesn't always hit the news, but it is an issue and it happens repeatedly. And that's part of the reason why we're glad you guys are here 
uh, and, and taking this seriously and learning about it. Um, obviously, this is kind of a lot. We talk about the New Jersey Dennis, the Anaheim, Mimi, uh, Atlanta, calls every few months. Um, so it can be scary, and we understand that. And the point of this is, is certainly not to uh, scare everybody, but um, we need to take it seriously. Um, because like Mike said, it, it could be us. And, you know, we often like to say, you know, we're in your dental chairs too, uh, as patients. And so we really do appreciate all that you do to keep us safe as, as, uh, those who sit in your, your dental chairs. Um, okay. So how do we know the why, how does this happen? Why is what, you know, my, I, I use tap water or bottled distilled water or filtered water to fill up my water bottles, Kelly T. Um, how, how, I don't understand how this can be a problem. Yeah, so, so biofilm, it grows perfectly in dental unit water lines. So uh, what, they're so tiny for one, and Mike, I don't know if you have the, the oh, sure. you can maybe show the diameter of the water lines, but water lines are so, so tiny. Yeah, and even in the busiest offices, you know, prior to, this, this is on a normal, when the world is normal, busiest offices, water lines sit stagnant most of the time. So they're less like rivers and they are actually more like ponds. Um, and, and that's kind of, you know, disheartening too. We don't want to think about, oh, we're putting pond water in our, in our patients' mouths. But the fact of the matter is, is the water sits stagnant most of the time. So it has that, it, it's, it creates that perfect environment, especially with the small tubing um, that, we're, that the dental unit water lines are, uh, it creates a perfect place for, for bacteria to grow, to thrive, to create that slime layer uh, that we call biofilm. Uh, so, so we know bacteria is everywhere anyway, right? So it's in your water supply. So you can be using sterile water and within five days of using your, your air water syringe, you can have a bacterial growth of up to 200,000 colony forming units of, of bacteria. Uh, so it, that's just how crazy fast biofilm grows, how stubborn it is, how hard it is to remove. Um, and especially in those tiny, 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 tiny tubes that sit at room temperature, um, biofilm is just, is just the perfect, uh, it, it creates that perfect place for it to grow. And, and that's where the pathogens um, can form. Um, oh, go ahead. Were you gonna say Real quick, I was just going to say uh, bullet number one and bullet number four might be oh. a quiz today. So your CE quiz. So just highlight that. <laughs> bullet number one. Oh. Bullet number Wait, are you cheating? Are you no. like helping people cheat? I didn't say for sure. <laughs> I said maybe. Oh man. And so yeah, yeah. They yeah, they are on the, the quiz. I took it. Um no cheating. Uh but <laughs> so so biofilm, I like to think about yes, like this analogy. So when you know when the biofilm is it's in your lines, uh you know, every time you use your air water syringe, it just kind of pushes it further down the line. It detaches, goes downstream, and then reattaches to the line a little bit further down. I think the dandelion analogy is, is perfect. And, and it's crazy. I was just outside and I saw a whole bunch of dandelions and it just made me, made me think about this. Um, so every time that you use your air water syringe, it is. It's like blowing on a dandelion. You're just kind of spreading those seeds everywhere or just spreading that biofilm, you know, however it breaks off and it breaks off at random intervals um, at random in random sizes uh, at random times it, but it just pushes it downstream little by little and uh, so yeah that's the perfect analogy for that so we know uh, there's potential for danger we know biofilm is going to grow really well in our water lines what do we need to do we're going to get to what we call the proven protocol the three steps to safe water um, but the CDC lays this out for us. And so the CDC guidelines since 2000, 2003 have had the same recommendations to dental practices of how to manage uh, dental unit water line contamination. So this isn't new, it's just gotten attention because um, you know some of these cases have, have become outbreaks and big. Uh, at least 33 state dental boards require CDC compliance to some level. And so uh, if you wanna know about your site, uh, state, reach out to us. Um, it's also on the map, the light blue ones. Um, and so dedicated CDC compliance following the CDC recommendations is going to protect your patients. Uh, it's, they, they, they lay it out great and we'll go into it. And then documentation of CDC compliance is what is going to protect your practice. 
Um, so you want to make sure that you have documented results, uh, standard operating procedures showing that you are uh, doing what you need to do and following those CDC recommendations. When a, you know, we had, we're in Colorado, the three of us and, and OSHA went into a few offices for complaints about something else. And they brought in the infection prevention checklist by the CDC, the 18 page infection prevention checklist. And they said, show me your documentation of all these things. And so it's, it's uh, important that we document. So we like to divide the CDC guidelines up into three pillars, uh, water for surgery, water for just regular dental unit, uh, routine care, and then documentation verification. So Kelly T talked about this already, sterile water and sterile delivery systems for surgery. So any surgeries use sterile water and only way to keep it sterile is with a sterile delivery system. So putting sterile water in a bottle, delivering it through those lines that are so good at building up bacteria is no longer sterile. The second uh, pillar and the second key things with that pillar is dental unit water quality needs to meet the EPA standard, 500 colony forming units per milliliter or less. Um, they recommend a number of ways you can do that. Independent water reservoirs, that's the water bottle systems we were talking about earlier. Uh, flushing, Kelly mentioned that when, uh, for uh, during COVID if you're using some of your lines. Chemical treatment, so that's a low level antimicrobial, we'll go into all this, shock treatment, but whatever uh, treatment solution you use, it needs to meet that 500 CFU standard. And then the last thing is again, that documentation, having, having standard operating procedures written down so uh, your staff know what they should be doing, how often they should be doing it, and then documentation by having tests proving that you've met that EPA standard. So Mike, uh, wh why, what, this was data published by Molinari and Nancy Dewhurst. It's in the ebook you can download later today, but uh, walk us through what, uh, what the real world data says in terms of treatments. Right, so everybody, uh, there's, uh, there's, pro there's products out there to treat your deli and water lines. There's tablets and straws and they're all, most of them are, you know, they have to be EPA approved and you have to, to, to do that, you have to prove to the government the product is safe and effective, with, and effective when used as directed. But um, in the real world, John Molinari and Nancy Dewhurst collected data anonymously from over 22,000 water tests. So this is a pretty good, this is a pretty solid data group, right? Uh, good information. But what they found was that in the real world, those products fail 31% of the time. Treated water fails 31% of the time. When people identified what, you know, they identified that they were using a tablet or they were using a straw or they were shocking their systems. Uh, it turns out that uh, if they identified that they were using a tablet and shocking with a separate product, they got the best, they got great results, almost 90%, which is really good if you compared to everyone else. Um, but all the products can work. Uh, they all can and do fail. So you have to use them properly. It's not enough to just, you know, it's not enough. No offense, Kelly B, but marketing departments will say, just buy <laughs> and you'll live happily ever after. I'm but- offended. I'm offended that I'm in that. I'm in sales, so I'm guilty of saying buy our product and uh, and 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 use it. But then we say use it properly, right? And if you use it properly, then you'll know um, you you can get way better results. So, 31% failures uh, of treated water lines. Look, I just invested a ton of money into tablets or straws or centralized system, Kelly T. How is this possible? How could, an, how could one of these treatment products fail me that often? So, yeah, so it's, it's, it's basically the science of, of low level antimicrobials versus biofilm. So the low level antimicrobials, like you're talking about, like the tablets, straws, the, the liquids, uh, they are designed to be continuously present in our water bottles. They're safe to ingest. So they're not gonna be the strongest, the strongest treatment, be something that's gonna hurt our patients, right? So it's just low level antimicrobial. So it can handle low levels of bacteria. Uh, but biofilm bacteria is as powerful. So um, this, is, this is a great little slide here. The little the guys, you can see the one bacteria and then the low level antimicrobial, they can handle a little bit at a time. They can handle you know low levels of bacteria, but that bacteria is constantly being reinforced through the air. Like I said, bacteria is everywhere. And in, those, in that small bore tubing, 
it grows very quickly. And so it quickly can overtake that low level antimicrobial, whether it's a tablet, straw, whatever you're using, shocking becomes necessary. And shocking is using a strong chemical that's not ingestible to clean out those lines. So then that the, the low level antimicrobial can do its job and maintain the cleanliness of the lines. Um, so the data that, br that brought us, we, we created this or what we, we like to call the proven protocol or the three steps to safe water. Uh, step one is shocking. Uh, and uh, you know, people that I talk to are like, what is shocking? And so it's not, it's not uncommon for, for you not to know. It's often, sometimes people don't think it's necessary, but it is really, really the key to, to water line maintenance. And shocking again, using that strong chemical to, to clean those lines out. It's really important to do it prior to starting any, any uh, treatment protocol. Even if you have brand new units, shock first. Uh, also important to shock every 90 days, quarterly. Um, if you're switching from one product to another, make sure you shock. And then if, if you have a test that fails, you're gonna wanna shock and then prove that you, you took corrective action and then it, and it passed. Uh, treating continuously is the step two. That's using that low level antimicrobial. So using a tablet, using a straw, something that is designed to be continuously present in our water bottles, that's safe to use on our patients. It's not gonna affect bonding, it's safe to swallow, um, and it'll help, uh, it'll help maintain those lines that you get clean by, by shocking. Uh, so again, tablets and straws. And then testing uh, quarterly, or again, you know, if you have a, a, a failure, uh, this is recommended by OSAP, but testing is, is really where it's at and keeping the documentation. If you do step one and two, awesome. But if you don't test, it, it, you may as well not even be doing tests or step one and two, because you have to have proof that your lines meet or exceed those CDC guidelines. So step three is just to verify or just to confirm that what you're doing is working. Uh, we're getting a lot of questions in. Thanks for hanging tight with us, guys. We'll, uh, I hope we're answering some of these as we go, but uh, we'll also get to these at the end, but keep them coming. Again, like I said, at the end, we'll, we'll stay as long as we need to make sure that your question gets, gets answered. Um, with that testing frequency recommendation, so OSAP, uh, uh, the Organization for Safety of Sepsis and Prevention, they're advocates of the safest dental visit. Um, they, they published a white paper on dental unit water lines, most comprehensive piece ever written on the subject. And uh, they recommended quarterly testing of products or quarterly testing of, of a maintenance protocol. And a lot of people respond, well, how, how you know, my, my, I don't need to do that because of, of the, the product that I use. Um, OSAP would recommend that you do, our data would recommend that you do. So they say even when a manufacturer is uh, mum on testing or testing frequency, uh, that you still test it regularly. Uh, and they say uh, not less than every three months. So every 90 days, every quarter. So that's where we get the quarterly figure from. Um, we also, with this, we want to, again, look at our data. We have thousands, hundreds of thousands of test results. And so what does that teach us about um, how testing improves uh, a culture of safety within an office and an understanding of how these products work and a development of a, an effective protocol? So what we first looked at was that regular testing is more effective. So the, uh, when you first test, uh, you really struggle. So your pass rate is actually closer to 60%. We've done smaller subset uh, 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 compilations of our data and it's, um, you know, for, for certain groups and that sort of thing. And it's 47%, 52%. Um, so that first time you test uh, could be a struggle, but by testing, you learn how to pass. You learn how to use your products more effectively. You know what situations they need to, uh, to be used in. You undercover, uncover different issues like dead legs within your equipment or toggle switches that you thought you were shocking a line, but really you weren't shocking a line. Um, so ProEdge is here to help you through each one of those things, but the more you test, you'll learn how to pass. And then quarterly testing works best. So um, CHCs and government offices uh, are required in most cases to test quarterly, uh, to follow that recommendation, and they pass really well. Um, they get over or about 95% pass rate. And so, um, again, it's not that testing somehow magically gets biofilm out of the lines, but when you test, you learn how to develop that protocol. You learn to adhere to that protocol so that there's not lapses. 
uh, in its effectiveness. Uh, okay, so Mike, what are my testing options? Okay, I should be testing. Where, where do I start? Well, there's just two ways to go. You can mail it into a third party and get that that validation. Um, and and you can and when you do that, you want to make sure that the lab uses a gold standard, which is the R2A standard. Um, it's expensive though because uh, FedEx is involved. You want to get the samples there overnight, and and that costs money. Uh, and then it takes seven days of incubation because that's how R2A works. It's kind of a slow, low level, uh, it, it takes a while, let's put it that way. Uh, and then the other choice is to do it yourself with an, with an in-office water test. And you, this is one you can do it yourself and uh, it's uh, more economical. Uh, this quick pass is, uh, gets results in uh, two to three days and it's easy to read, it grows red on white. It's not as precise as the mail-in one. It doesn't give you a perfect number exactly, but it is a great, it's a great tool. Uh, and if you pass this, you know your water's safe. Now, what's a way we can save some money when we test? Big time money. So, right. And, that, and so, and for, I see there's a lot of salespeople on here from and service techs uh, from around the country. We appreciate that. And one of the neat things is that they can tell you that uh, you don't have to buy one of these for every single line in your dental office. Buy one for every operatory and do a combined sample. That's what this slide is showing you. So you take equal amounts from the air water syringe on the doctor's side, equal amounts from the air water syringe on the assistant side, then from the high speed handpiece and the cat, you know, whatever. If there's four devices in there, put them in, let it sit for a minute and really get that membrane nice and wet. And after one minute, you dump the water out and then let it sit someplace quiet for two to three days, come in and read it. If it looks like this, you passed and you're good to go. If there's any red at all, it's probably time to shock. So instead of testing every line individually, you can pool those samples uh, because if you're gonna fail, you're gonna shock anyway, right, Mike? Yes, you don't know. So if you fail, like say so you took it from four devices, you don't know which one caused the failure. And as Kelly T mentioned earlier, uh, biofilm sloughs off and detaches at random times, random sizes. So there's a lot of randomness to your results. But if you do a combined sample, you can say all the lines in that room are safe. And we proved this by looking at the data. And this was a really good idea from Kelly B. Uh, and basically the data shows that when someone fails, the average failure is 32,000 CFUs per milliliter. So, and the average pass is almost zero. 24 CFU per milliliter is the average pass. So. What that means is most people are either treating their water lines and it's working or it's not. Only 3% of the time is it between zero and 200 CFUs, which is, you know, uh, you're good to go. So uh, we're, we're going to, we're coming towards the end here. We want to wrap up uh, real quick, ProEdge laboratory testing, third-party verification. We use all gold standard testing methods. That includes R2A, which we talked about earlier and, and is recommended by OSAP. Um, but along with that, we do duplicate samples, uh, vortexing samples, germicidal neutralization. Long story short, just makes it more reliable um, and is recommended by OSAP. We also do blind testing. So nobody who tests uh, knows where the product, where the sample came from. They know they don't know what products are being used. Um, so it's, it's all above board there. Uh, overnight shipping is included in our kits. And then you can always do consultations. So we're always available, even if you don't test with us, we're always available. We'll answer questions, help you use their, those products. Well, and, and, and they're easy to order from your dental supply company. They're available. From Absolutely. And also, um, uh, just to point out, I'm sorry, go real quick. I just, the, during this time, uh, for, for testing, um, our, since ours come with the FedEx label. And that's really, really, if, if you're going to test soon, Definitely buy, you want to go with the one with the FedEx label because FedEx is charging like a surcharge. So let us pay for that. Get the, you know, ours that comes with that FedEx shipping label already included. You want to make sure you're, you're you know, let us pay for the shipping on that. Thanks for that, Kelly. And we, we've, we've worked out a deal with FedEx to get it uh, as low as possible. So you guys don't have to worry about that. Uh, this is what your results look like uh, when you get the mail in. You want all those greens right there in the middle. That feels lovely. Um, <laughs> uh, not only can you do a happy dance, but you can call Mike Rust and he'll do a happy dance, record it and share it to your Facebook. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we've got the quick pass. So the quick pass is the blue 
uh, water mail, or excuse me, the blue in office. There you go, Mike. Uh, test kit. Uh, advanced media makes the bacteria grow red. Uh, 48 to 72 hour results. So really quick. Uh, you can make take action much faster. Germicidal neutralization is included within that. So it's just like the laboratory test and that it, re it aligns with OSAP's recommendations. And then because you're not paying for shipping and because you're not paying for labor, you can do it all yourself, 100% confidential within your office. It's a lot more cost effective. So we want to make that an option. And then uh, and we'll, we'll hook you up today. So uh, this just shows the red bacteria and how nice that is to read. Again, quick pass is the blue one. There's a red one out there. Uh, really cool uh, opportunity, um, but we've made several improvements to make sure that it's uh, more effective for you and put that with that germicidal neutralization, half the incubation time and the red bacteria on white background. Again, documentation. You wanna document uh, as much as you can to protect your practice. So this is a water testing log that comes with the quick pass and you can download it off our website, um, but just makes it easy for you to document. You keep that in your log. And we recommend you to keep your, your water test records for five years. Uh, again, wrapping up, we're going a little long. I apologize, everybody. We're gonna to get to the Q and A. Um, just wanna make sure you guys know we've got video training resources. Our blog has got lots of resources. Uh, if you want to learn how to shock, proedgedental.com slash shock. Uh, to find our YouTube videos, you can go onto YouTube and just uh, type in proedgedental uh, and you will get to our videos. Um, Research-based and hopefully not boring. Uh, basically, it makes me look like an idiot. Uh, My facial oh, it does. It's not oh. good. <laughs> no, they're very yeah, not a good quick pass. <laughs> They are. They're cute and fun and short and, and sweet. They are sweet because I eat a donut in one of them. And Kelly <laughs> eats a donut in one of them. That's right. I think that's the shock protocol. Yeah. Um, complimentary consultations. Kelly T is always available to you in your practice. We got a team of people that will answer the phone call and, and help you learn best practices, improve your test results. Uh, if there's any like, hey, I need a resource for this, we'll make sure you get it uh, answer your questions. And then one thing I want to highlight is that we help you use um, your treatment protocol right. more effectively. Right. right. So we're not trying to get you on blue tab. Um, we're trying to help you use the product that you got more effectively. So educating you on the instructions for use, educating how it works most effectively with different source waters, all sorts of stuff to make sure that you can use it more effectively. Thank you. You've been a great crowd. Yes. Um, <laughs> Um, really, thank you guys for joining. Uh, we really appreciate your time. Now, time for some gift giving. Want to make sure you get that CE and want to make sure you get that special gift we have for you. Yeah, <laughs> you get toilet paper. You get paper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we don't have any toilet paper for you. Oh, oh come on. Does anyone? Good night. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully we have something better for you. So first CE, again, uh, we highlighted some of the important answers for you that are maybe the toughest on the questions, but go to proedgedental.com slash COVID-19. Uh, you'll scroll down to the Molinar ebook. It's about 10 page ebook and, um, uh, and click the download button. It'll go into your downloads folder. On page 20, I know that doesn't make sense because I just said it's a 10 page ebook, but trust me, on the bottom, you'll see page 20, uh, there's a CE quiz. And you can click the link on that page, it'll take you to CDE World, and you can uh, use that promo code right there CTIC, not CTLC, CTIC2, uh, during your checkout, and um, you'll be able to get free CE. Again, we covered uh, everything today. Uh, you got to pass the test. I can't do that for you. Kelly T can't do that for you. Uh, but if you need, if you have any trouble with the questions, give Kelly T a call and she'll be happy to, to give you a little uh, last minute education on it. Um, but yeah, go, go to the proedgedental.com slash COVID-19. You can download that. Um, if you have any trouble, we'll help you out. We're going to, uh, I'm going to move on from this slide, but I will come back during to this slide during uh, the Q and A. So hold tight. And then uh, we want to supply you guys with a four pack of quick pass, not only for the time you spent and the investment that you're making in learning uh, best practices in waterline safety, 
But we know this is a challenging time for dental practices. It's a challenging time for the dental industry with all of us uh, having to shut down most of, uh, most of what we do for patients. And so, um, and we also know biofilm is gonna increase in contamination because we're not using our dental units. And so we wanna make sure that you're set up to be able to test at your practice, test those dental units before going back to routine care and feel really good. You can sleep at night that you're not, that this isn't a challenge for you. Uh, Cause we know that there's lots of financial uh, challenges through this. So if you uh, registered for this webinar, you can go to proedgedental.com slash live webinar, enter the password in this together, all one word, all lowercase and submit the form. Uh, and we will send those out uh, uh, as soon as we can and get you that, get you that. So you're, you're all set to go when you come back. Uh, it is limited one per practice. We appreciate if you would share the webinar opportunity uh, and not so much the, the link with the, the password. This is a, you know, this isn't a, uh, this is an expensive offer for us, but we want to make sure that you are golden. So we appreciate if you, if you share the webinar um, and not just the, the link. Um, and then last, uh, when you click out of today, you're going to get a quick survey. We love your feedback. Um, if you need anything, go to proedgedental.com slash COVID-19 for more resources or uh, email Kelly or I, and we'll take care of you. You can, uh, you can email Mike as well. He's at Mike R at proedgedental.com. Mike R at proedgedental.com. Um, but let's get to Q&A. Uh, we've got a number of great questions. Um, Thank you guys for your patience. Again, you're welcome to stay as long as you need. We'll, we'll go through all of them, uh, but here we go. Okay, Jeanette asks a great question. Um, uh, amalgam separators and using bleach to shock the water lines. Um, bleach should not be used in the amalgam uh, lines. In your, evac in your evacuation lines, right? Sorry, evacuation lines. Uh, can you guys explain that and, and help us out understand what we need to do and what the difference is? And uh, go ahead, Mike. Well, the amalgam separator is always just on the evacuation lines, but the sink goes right to, does not go through the amalgam separator. So you can put bleach and these other, what they call oxidizer shock products down the sink. So if your water syringe doesn't quite reach to a sink, use a patient cup or a bucket to collect the bleach or the, or the, or the other uh, shock product and then dump that down the sink. Don't use your evacuation lines. That's a good point. We want to protect the fish downstream too. Uh, I'm going to go back to the CE uh, page just so you guys have that information in case you missed it. Uh, Milton asks if ProEdge is going to be able to handle water tests once this crisis is over. Um, and the answer, Milton, is absolutely. We can take them now. We can take them later. We'll, we're set up for you and we're all good to go. Um, another question. I have... Uh, Going into the office maybe once per week, how long should I flush then? Still two to three minutes or should I purge and refill when I see a patient? Um, so right now it looks like she's going in uh, once a week to see a patient. Um, should she purge? And then when a patient comes in? No, she sounds like she's using that as an open operatory. She's leaving, she's using yeah. So I would, that would be your regular protocol shock on the first day, treat with your tablet or straw test on the last day of the quarter. Definitely flush, you know, when you get there for sure. Yeah, um, flush and flush first thing in between patients per the CDC guidelines, right? And, and it's going to be a little bit different if you're, if you're using the dent to pure straw, you're going to want, of course, empty that the water bottle, but keep the water in the lines. If you're using a tablet, something, it, it could be a little bit different. Uh, if you want to get in touch with me uh, later, email me, call me. We can go over your your exact protocol, and I can I can help you better. Uh, Kelly wants to know about the bleach diluted bleach solution. What's the correct ratio of water and bleach? Hey, Kelly. Um, so yeah, so uh, yeah, one to ten um, for for most. It it kind of depends on the concentration of the bleach. So there, there, there's a 6% bleach and there's an 8.25% bleach. Um, so you kind of want to look for that on the bleach. Sometimes it's hard to find. Um, I used to think that it was just Clorox that had the 8.25% sodium hypochlorite, but I just bought some Clorox and it's just 6%. So just kind of look, but most of the time it's going to be that 
that 5.25 or 6%. So yes, a, a one to 10, so one part bleach, nine parts water, and you're gonna wanna run that through your lines. Now, if, if it is a stronger concentration, uh, you'll wanna do a one to 13. Um, and again, I can, we have the bleach uh, protocol. We have a YouTube video on it, happy to send you that. Uh, it is important to write bleaches, bleach can be corrosive. So we wanna make sure that we're doing the correct dilution as well as the contact time is what's really, really important. Uh, don't leave it in you know, overnight for sure. Um, 10 to 15 minutes is, is, is long enough. So if you can just hit on that one more time, Kelly, in terms of how do we make sure that this doesn't impact uh, the dental unit and, and, and hurt the equipment? Right, so yeah, so you don't wanna leave it in too long because it, it's bleach, right? It's, it's, it's corrosive. If we leave it in, it can eat through our lines. I have had offices or, you know, they see their results and they'll just wanna nuke their, their lines with 100% bleach all night. And definitely don't want you to do that. Um, so you wanna follow the, the, the proper concentration. Um, and it just kind of depends on the concentration of bleach. So again, there's a 6% and an 8.25%. Most of the time I find a six, it just, that I find is usually a 6% um, sodium hypochlorite. So that's a one to 10. So one part bleach, nine parts water, you're gonna run that through each line and let it sit for 10 minutes, um, 10 to 15. You don't wanna go you know, too, much long, too much longer, definitely not overnight. Um, because it can be harsh on your equipment, but you know, if you're, if you're doing it correctly, um, uh, if you properly dilute it, flush it really, really well, um, it, it's, it's a, it's a great shock. We like it. Um, uh, we're going to go through some of the questions on the chat, knock those out, but please put your questions on the Q and A. It's a lot harder to do it via the chat. So please, uh, um, do that via the Q and A, not the chat box. Um, how do you get a dummy straw? How do you get one of these straws so that you can shock through it? Um, go ahead and uh, email Kelly T or go to proedgedental.com slash shock. And there's a, a link on there to request it. Um, so just get in touch with us. We'll, we'll make sure you're good. Uh, Mike, Lori asks, Denapure says that there's no reason to test. It's good for 365 days. What would you say to that? Um, we... They're, they're softening their, their stance on that a little bit, I think, and they, we've, we've seen some more recent articles written by the Denapure experts um, who are saying that there are advocates for testing, um, probably because the OSAP position paper came out and said quarterly testing makes sense no matter what product you use, and in the absence of uh, guidelines about testing, we, they say, OSAP says, uh, test your water lines at a minimum of every 90 days. Don't wait more than 90 days. Um, the equipment companies like ADEX says we they want you to test their water lines no matter what product you use. They want you to do it every 90 days, every month, and then every 90 days of the test. Right. So I, I, we, we'd say err on the side of every 90 days. Here's the thing. And, I, and again, I'd like to pick on marketing departments around the world who say, just buy our product and it's good for a year. Um, and that's, that's great. But if I wait a year and then I test my water and I fail, I'm going to start wondering when I started failing, you know? So with 90 days, it's a reasonable, it's a reasonable thing. You know, we're looking at about four bucks a line to test with a combined sample. It's about 12 cents a patient. There's really no economic reason not to test quarterly. Uh, and last thing I'd say with that is again, the low level antimicrobials, whether tablet or straw pass about 75 ish percent. Um, and so they're really good products, both the tablets and the straws. We, we love both of them. Uh, mm -hmm. We think the straw, obviously, it's got the convenience. That's really nice. Uh, but they're not silver bullets. And so they do right. fail. Uh, and right. that's why we would recommend pairing, whether it's a tablet or a straw, with a shock. And you do, you do these three-step protocol, you're going to get over 95% passing results. If you don't, uh, whether you're using a, a straw or a tablet, you're going to be somewhere around somewhere in the 70 percentile. So highly recommend that you, whatever treatment protocol or whatever treatment product you use, whatever low level antimicrobial you use, uh, that you pair that with a shock treatment and then testing that quarterly to make sure that it's, it's working. Um, and also um, following the instructions for use for, for each straw, they're going to be a little different. So um, uh, the, for, for Dentapure, really, really important to look at those instructions for use because 
You got to keep track of the water that you're going through your iodine, you know, content. They're great. We, we love them. It's just you, it's really important to follow the instructions. Uh, same thing with Saracil. Uh, just follow the instructions for use. They can be a little bit long or, or if you, maybe you don't have them. So if you need them, call, call us and get those to you. And that will also help. Um, but shocking is just, is just necessary no matter what you're using. Uh, can you speak to distilled versus tap water outcomes? Does it matter? Uh, a lot of practices are buying distilled water from their dental units for their dental units because they were told they will, there will be lower contamination. Uh, also, some repair techs say distilled water prematurely corrodes dental units. Uh, Mike, you want to take that? That's from Karen Da. Karen, thanks for joining us. Yeah. Alo yeah aloha to Karen. She's the ocean. From Hawaii. Be in, uh, I think she's in Hawaii right now. So uh, good question. And um, let's see. I'd probably answer that by saying... Uh, if you have a if you have a concern about the hardness of your water, um, then you might want to use something besides tap water. But tap water with the tablets works really good and doesn't have a problem with taste ninety nine percent of the time. Um, but if you but if the water in your area is particularly hard, that can cause problems with certain uh, with certain um, treatment products, including some of the tablets and some of the straws. Um, ADEX says if you're concerned about the hardness of the water, don't use distilled water, use Kelly tea, what is it called? Like, uh, oh, they, what do they call it? Uh, drinking water, spring water, or- Artesian water, just a, just, just a regular water. drinking water, balanced in minerals. Right, so they prefer that. We do too, because it just tastes better than distilled water. Distilled water, you put a tablet in distilled water, it might not taste good. Um, but most of these products work great with tap water, with good tap water. That's why we recommend you test your source water from time to time, whether it comes from the tap or, or a distiller or something like that. Good question. Mm -hmm. but, uh, we say, if you're gonna use, just if you have to use distilled water, consider uh, drinking water, artesian water or spring water. And what about the, sorry, Mike, go ahead. Yeah, that's all. Um, what about the, dis, the in-office distillers, the reverse osmosis units, some of, some of those solutions that we, we found that, that yeah. they're part of this problem more problem. often than they're part of the solution. So we really recommend that you, you test your source water and use the, the best water that's convenient for your office. If you want to use uh, a distiller, make sure it's providing good water. Sorry, I didn't mean to, to interrupt there. Yeah, you know, it, this was kind of baffling to me when I, you know, first kind of jumping on, especially, you know, from my nursing background coming to here. I, I never, I never really thought about that. When you think of filtration systems, you think of, of purified water, I think it's going to be a better quality. And then, you know, finding out that the filtration system, reverse osmosis, in-office distillers, they remove the total dissolved solids. They're great at, at, at removing salts, minerals, other impurities, not so much at removing bacteria. Uh, most of them have carbon filters, which acts as a membrane and bacteria grows very, very quickly in them. And so, yes, like Mike said, oftentimes that's the source of the problem. And so, when we're just you know going through consultations, we ask what's your source water. If it's an in-office filtration system of any kind, uh, we suggest testing it, and um, so we make sure it's a good source. All right, so Maggie, yes, you can reuse these uh, on different chairs. So after you after you shock using this, take it off, go to the next one, use it on the next one. Mm -hmm. um, Evody asked how to clean cavitron lines. Right. Great so, question. Yeah. Yeah, it is. They're, they're different. They're harder. They fail 50% more often because the lines are longer and they move, the water moves much slower. So you, the, the procedure is the same as with the air water syringe or the high speed handpiece lines. The problem is you want to verify that, um, that the cavitron is actually hooked up to the water bottle. We've found that often cavitrons are hooked up to city water and they need to be retrofitted to the water bottle. So way to do that, of course, is if you're, use, if you're shocking with the, the, the pink stuff, just verify that the pink stuff comes out the end of the cavitron. Once you've done that, then you can let it sit overnight and then flush it out. Uh, with bleach, it's trickier. And gosh, I've made that mistake several times uh, where, uh, you know, I was smelling the bleach and it took a minute before the bleach came out of the cavitron because the line was 26 feet long and the water moved so slow. So it is a little bit trickier, but watch the video starring Kelly and Kelly. And uh, it's uh, and that'll help a lot. But um, if you have questions specific, you know, feel free to call us on those cavitrons. You want to yeah. it is trickier.
muted technology. Come on, Carol. <laughs> um, once you shock, uh, when you uh, do you go back to adding your continuous treatment product, your tablet or your straw before you test, or does does that matter? Uh, I, I say yes. I mean, we have dermatidal neutralization, which will will neutralize that blue tab or whatever product that you're using. So yeah, use it like you're gonna put your your uh, you know the water put the straw back on your tablet in, and then test like you would uh, be using it on a patient. That's what I that's what I recommend. Um, great answer, Kelly. Thank you. Um, it, how do we dry the line of a cavatron? Is it is it okay to purge through a cavatron? Yes, and longer. Good question. Same thing. Empty your water bottle and put it back on. Then hit the cavatron, and uh, it'll take a minute, but eventually it should run dry. If it never runs dry, it means it's not hooked up to the water bottle. It's hooked up to city water, and you can't shock it. Uh, you can. I suggest calling Dentsply. Asking them, they have really good, uh, they have really good, uh, usually instructions for use on it. Yeah, weekly shock, so actually, I think. Right, exactly right. So uh, lots of great questions in here, guys. Thank you for submitting them. Uh, we'll make our way through them as, much, as quickly as possible. Um, Monica asks, I have one chair with a cartridge at the bottom of the chair, and we use municipal water. How do we shock that? Sorry, I got bad news. Bad Retrofit. <laughs> if you don't, if you don't have a water, if you, good, the good news is if you do have a water bottle, just shock through that, you'll have clean water in 10 minutes. If you don't have a water bottle, we don't have an answer for you, right? So our answer is contact your favorite service technician and have them come out and be, in the next couple of weeks and they can come out and retrofit for 190 bucks plus labor. And then you can have a water bottle and then you can shock. But yeah, if you don't, there's no easy mechanism uh, to put the shock in there. All right. So, um, when our, during routine care, this is an honest question. We, during routine year care, we used a different shock product than Crostex liquid ultra. Uh, sounds like regularly as a routine protocol. Um, but when they're returning, they're, they're wanting to use the Crostex liquid ultra. Their question is, do I need to do it the three nights or, or can I just do it one night or what, what's the recommendation there? I, I would do it three. I would kind of follow the instructions for you from, from what Crosstech says. Um, and, and if you're gone for extended period of time, th do the, the initial or the initial shock of the three, the three nights. I think it's, it's important at this point. The three nights are going to, uh, in pretty much all situations, going to solve any sort of problem that you got. Um, you're, you're welcome to try it one time and then, but you want to test to make sure that that worked. Right. Um, but yeah, saving time, saving energy, you do it and just, you go for it, do it three nights in a row, you're gonna pretty much solve any problem you got mm -hmm. in those water lines. Right. Uh, until we would recommend then you go back to your, continue your regular shock weekly um, or uh, use a maintenance tablet or straw and then you can go much longer between shocks. Uh, with our water bottles, anonymous question, with our water bottles, we seem to get a black film in the bottom that will not come uh, come out, and we had to use new bottles. Um, we yeah. distill our own water in the office. Is there something we sh else we should be doing? Oh, they're using tabs, and they're distilling their own water. So um, that's pretty unusual. So that um, I would say test your source water from that just yeah make sure it's part of the solution and, and not part of the problem. Secondly, most of that comes from precipitates in the water and when it attaches to the silver in the tablets that can settle to the bottom of the bottle. Um, it's almost always cosmetic. We've found it's minerals more than it, it's not really bacteria uh, and it can be hard to clean, but um, you, can clean, you can clean your bottles and uh, ADEC even recommends using bleach every three months just to shock your water bottles. You can use bleach for 10 minutes, diluted bleach for 10 minutes, uh, but also simple green works pretty good. Um, and if you're using blue type like you are and you're still struggling with it, give us a call. We, well, we, can, we can help with that. But that's usually a, it, it's a, it's a rare thing. Cleaning it really every month or two or three is enough usually. Um, Maria said, you know, just missed something. So when you, Maria, when you come back before routine care, um, you want a shock and you want to test to make sure that your shock worked because that biofilm is going to increase during this time. And so you really want to make sure your CDC 
client before going back to routine care. Um, how Lori asks, how often should we be testing during routine care? The answer is quarterly. So OSAP says uh, monthly, and then when you have consecutive passing results, move to quarterly. So quarterly is the minimum recommendation, Lori. Um, uh, uh, sorry, I don't know this name, but we have always done in-house water testing. So in-office water testing. Do you know if any company who does water line testing, because in-house testing is easy, but very sensitive and uh, depends on the operator's experience. So do you guys know a company that does laboratory testing? It goes out and does it? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta mail it in. And we're the, we're the one. Now, now just so you know, um, we've been getting a few questions that are, that are coming in from Canadians. So to our good uh, friend, Thor, uh, yeah. we don't know of a laboratory in Canada, but QuickPass is available from Shine, Patterson, Sinclair, K Dental. K Dental. Dental's. Yeah. The uh, dental same, is in Canada. Same, so, yes, laboratory test. There, we don't know anybody that comes out and does the testing for you for a laboratory test, but uh, you can mail in uh, to our test. There's another lab called Agenix. Uh, you can also do Loma Linda um, University, does a laboratory testing. Again, just want to make sure you use a, a test that's R2A. Uh, right. or any laboratory testing. There are some other tests that are sold by uh, dental labs that, uh, dental water labs that don't uh, use that. Um, and it's not the right test for water lines. Um, how often does the CDC recommend shocking dental unit water lines? Uh, the, the CD they, they don't. <laughs> CDC says you got to do four things. You got to train your staff so they know bugs grow in dental water lines. You got to treat your water lines. It's not enough just to buy just water and put that in your water bottles. So you got to train, you got to treat, you got to test. They say check with the manufacturer on the frequency of the testing, but we say quarterly and OSEP says quarterly. And four, don't forget sterile water when you're doing surgery, sterile water from a sterile source. Right. So even I think if, if you know, if CDC may not say, oh, we'll shock. But they do say, hey, you have to meet these certain guidelines. And the way to do that is by, by using a, 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 a good shock product and an effective uh, low-level antimicrobial um, to get there. So Joseph asks, uh, what does the CDC recommend in terms of, I believe, testing frequency? And similar answer to a previous question, CDC doesn't have a recommendation. They say regularly. Uh, and they say consult with your dental unit manufacturer uh, as or and, and treatment product manufacturer as to the testing frequency. Um, like the OSAP slide showed earlier, a lot of manufacturers, both on the dental unit side and on the treatment side, don't have a recommendation. Uh, they just say test frequently as well, or they say follow the other manufacturer. Treatments manufacturers say follow your dental unit manufacturer, and then the dental unit manufacturer says follow your treatment manufacturer. Uh, so just kind of kicking the, the thing down the line. So that's that's why we recommend uh, following the OSAP recommendation there that quarterly is a minimum. Now ADEC, um, the dental unit manufacturer, uh, which probably 60% of dental practices have in the country. Uh, and they've had the same protocol for eight or nine years, um, class act company, and they recommend that you test quarterly as well. Um, Monthly and then quarterly, right? Monthly. Uh, for a couple of months and then quarterly. Correct. Uh, same frequency as OSEP. Monthly, then we have consecutive passing results. Go ahead and move to um, uh, uh, quarterly. Uh, Mike, you want to take Pamela's question? Yeah, Pamela's asking about uh, what about the non-sterile water coming out of a surgical handpiece when sectioning for an extraction? Again, that's a surgical procedure. You want to use sterile from a sterile source. Most, I mean, all surgical handpieces have an external water Component so you can use sterile water from a sterile source and attach it right to the handpiece. Don't mm -hmm. use high-speed handpiece for the surgical procedures and don't use non-sterile water for surgical procedures. That's right. That's the CDC. Uh, Kim asks if we'll make these slides available. Yes, it's going to go to YouTube and we will send you the link uh, to. Uh, you'll have a recording of it tomorrow. Um, uh, Gina asked. Uh, Mike, do you have quick pass tests in shock? 
Um, <laughs> yeah. So actually Gina, uh, it's, it's a good question. She ordered them through Midway Dental. Um, uh, Gina, here, here's what I'm going to say. If you can reach out to me, Kelly B at proedgedental.com. We do have plenty of quick pass in stock, but Gina, reach out to me, Kelly B at, oops, Kelly B at proedgedental.com and we'll take care of you there. Um, the, and most, most distributors have it. That's, oh yeah. It's pretty yeah. Unusual. It's, it's we, we have over 50 distributors um, and they're all, they all should be well stocked and, and we're well stocked. Yeah. Um, great question about the Sterosol straw. The Sterosol straw includes a shock treatment. Um, my understanding is that the company's position is that you don't need to shock once the straw is installed. This is dependent on the lines being clean when the straw is installed. Is this contrary to your guidance? Um, no, I don't think. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, it does. It is. It's really nice. It comes with the, the blue that you can you can see. It's really cool. Uh, we love that about that. Uh, the the sterosil. Although same thing with any low level antimicrobial. Um, shocking becomes necessary. So now you can shock with the citrusyl shock through the sterosil straw. Um, it's safe safely. So and and they recommend that. Um, so I, I would follow their guidelines. Um, Sometimes the, the citrus shock may not be strong enough, so you have to use a dummy straw. But you know, you know, follow their instructions and, and guidelines. Um, but yeah, it the, we love the blue shock that comes with it. It's really it's really cool. Uh, but oftentimes, uh, you know, bacteria is powerful. Biofilm is is stubborn, so shocking with with something um, more often is needed for sure. So, um, and I would, we're another question coming from Monica, which is similar. We also use the sterosol straw and we're shocking with those citrusol tablets. We test quarterly and even following that protocol, uh, it's struggling to pass. Um, so Monica's asking, how often do I shock? How often should I shock? And so Monica and the previous question or answer caller, or caller, um, <laughs> <laughs> I guess this is on the radio. Um, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I, I think in short, the answer is we'll test and see if it's working. Uh, if the right. protocol isn't working, call Kelly T and she'll help you figure out what, what do you need to do, whether that's, again, going to a, a Crosstex Liquid Ultra, which we feel is a, a more, looking at the data, just a more effective shock product. Um, if you're installing the sterosol straw and that initial shock does well, uh, on your test results, awesome. We're all for that. Uh, if it's if it's not providing you the effectiveness that you need, then we'd suggest uh, you know looking at some other options in terms of shock products with that and and shock frequencies. Um, again, just looking at the data, it's pretty hard for a straw to truly last a year. Uh, whether whether you've got um, clean lines in the very beginning or not, and so. Uh, we do like a quarterly shock to, to be safe. Um, um, on her question too, I see that it looks like uh, we even tried using a tablet along with the straw. Don't suggest doing that because you don't want to make the silver too, too high. So you don't want to kind of combine them. So if you're still, you know, if you're having failing results, you know, use the shock product, that's fine. But I wouldn't add a daily tablet in addition to using the straw. Um, it's not safe. We don't want to, you know, get too high of a silver level uh, to your patients. And there, it's, it's really not needed. Uh, if you're investing in a straw or investing in tablets, either one of them is good enough to work paired with a great shock product. Uh, so if you're not getting the results you, you want, um, I wouldn't recommend just buying more stuff and putting them in there. You want to uh, you want to find a solution that's efficient and effective. So call Kelly T, email Kelly T, and she'll help you do that. Um, how often should we test? Again, quarterly. And then we shock monthly. Christine asked, we shock monthly. Will we harm our lines? Great question, Christine. We have a lot of offices that shock monthly and they do great. You know, I think it's, it's a matter of following the, uh, if you're shocking with the diluted bleach, make sure that you're using that uh, correct dilution in uh, the contact time. Or if you're shocking with it, with the liquid ultra, shocking monthly can sometimes be a, a great option for offices because keeping it simple um, is just, is awesome. You know, it keeps everybody kind of on the same page. If you keep it simple, Hey, we're shocking once a month, the whole office knows you're doing that. And it just gets you on a good protocol. So, um, 
I, I encourage it. I, I don't think it's it's gonna gonna hurt for sure. All right, Mike. Christina asks, can you talk about the best way to test? I want to. I would love to. It's either the mail in or the quick pass. <laughs> Whenever you want, whatever works for you. Um, it's what it's whatever is best for you. They're both. We think they're both acceptable. A lot of people do this three to two or three times a year, and then the other two times a year they do the mail in. <laughs> So both have advantages and disadvantages. Christina, it's, it's yeah, it's what works best for your office. Um, and we certainly, ProEdge would certainly love to, to be the one, one of the, either solution uh, for you. Um, if, you're Canada, if you're in Canada, Quick Pass is the best way to test. So Sarah asks about the slide that uh, shows state by state CDC compliance. Sarah, uh, email Kelly T and we'll get you that info. Um, and um, so email us and we'll get you that information. Um, sure. um, okay, uh, Deirdre asks, at my office, we use Stericel straw, the 90 day straw. Uh, it has a built-in shocking agent when you first install. Should I use another shocking agent uh, before the 90 days? Uh, and Deirdre, we would say test, test. If it's working. <laughs> right. Awesome. Exactly uh, right. So don't don't yes. need to change your if if you're not testing and you don't know how well you're doing, we always say don't don't get a uh, uh, we say don't worry about getting on the scale until you start your diet. Um, it's know how where. I guess that would be the opposite in this situation, but <laughs> if you got a good protocol down, you know, it, it's great, but just, just check, just test. Cause you know, you don't know, you don't know unless, uh, unless you test. So yeah. Um, is there a faster way, Mike, to obtain test results? Um, we use pro edge, uh, but it takes about 10 days, uh, after submission with mail, uh, you know, the, the overnight shipping. And then when the, the you know if there's a weekend in between there and then when we get the results right no that's hi that's Lori true. oh <laughs> I'm like I know Lori <laughs> why don't you take why don't you answer it Kelly oh uh, you know it's fine I you know I wish there was uh the quick pass is the faster option for sure so you can have the result in, in 48 hours uh right. Has to be more of a screening device, um, but unfortunately, right now, and especially, it's just really important that we we do that five to seven day incubation. That's gonna that's the gold standard for dental unit water line testing. Um, so yeah, it's it's a, it's a it's a long you know a little bit long, but it's it's very important that we that you do that gold standard testing method. Uh, now, if you have a fail and you need to you know reopen an an operatory kind of quick, use the quick pass if you can for for, for retesting. It'll you can get the results very quick. Uh, 48 hours and, and get that operatory back up and running. Uh, the other thing I would say with that is stay tuned. Proage might have some yeah. exciting, exciting things coming uh, for that, Lori. So thank you for the question. Great question. Uh, right now, the reason why it takes long is because that's what's recommended and to get you the uh, true accurate results. Um, but we're, uh, we are, just stay tuned. We got you. Soon. Uh, um, okay, so uh, should ultrasonic units be shocked? Ultrasonic scalers. Ultrasonic scalers? Yeah. Whether they're Cavatron or another brand, yes. Um, okay, combined samples. Can we send them into your lab using combined samples? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Again, we just looked at the data. Uh, there were some, you know, Molinari and, and Shannon were asking us to look at that. Uh, we looked at the data to, to decide, you know, are there gonna be false negatives? Uh, is this gonna create inaccuracy? It did not. Um, and so we like it. We think it's reasonable for practices. It's a great way to, to get the information you need to take actionable results. And it helps you save costs. So uh, yeah. we think it's a great option for you. Um, Ellen, how do you get a dummy straw? Contact Kelly T at proedgedental.com or go to proedgedental.com slash shock. Um, let's see. So I, I tested my brand new equipment a few months after its use. It came back as a huge fail, 200,000 plus CFU. We retested it and it came back as five CFU. 
what would have caused contamination? That was frustrating process for us. Um, yeah, uh, I'd like to take a stab at that. Um, we've seen this before where someone passes and then fails. Now, she, we, what, Pamela didn't say what she was using to treat her water lines, but uh, I'm assuming that she's treating it and that's how she got the pass. Generally, untreated water lines don't have much chance of passing. But treated water lines can have a big fail. And it, it goes to that slide that Kelly was showing us earlier where the biofilm will uh, detach in different sizes and shapes. And if you get a big chunk falls off into that sample, it's, it's, there is some randomness to it. So um, I would say keep, doing, keep shocking and testing and following the protocol. Um, if, but I would also say this, it is harder than you think to contaminate a water sample. I've right. tried. We've tried. Ways. I've done lots of silly experiments where I kicked an empty vial across a dirty floor. Um, I've done lots of stuff. And, and if you put sterile water in there, it doesn't grow. If you put dirty water in there, it grows. But if you try to, well, I've tried other things. We've tried some, and they're non-scientific, so I don't pretend to know. Just use good technique, but it probably isn't something you did. It's probably just what happened in that sample. Um, just keep testing and following the results. And we do things at, at our lab to make sure that that is mitigated, including vortexing our sample. Again, breaking that up, making sure it's homogenous. Um, so th there, uh, you know, there, are, there, it's very rare that you'll get two samples that are that far apart. So not sure exactly what happened there, Pamela. Um, but we do lots of testing in our lab, use lots of different methods to make sure that uh, we don't contaminate the samples. And also, uh, for some reason, if there were, uh, we would have a way to, to communicate that to you. Um, sorry, Kelly, did you want to? Um, so I was just going to touch, I know it was kind of not that really the whole, your, your, your question here, but just to kind of touch on new equipment, um, people will test and they'll get, they'll get failing results with new equipment and kind of wonder why. And so I reached out to like um, manufacturers and they told me that uh, new equipment, although we think, you know, new is, is, is sterile, it's not. So when they, uh, you know, install your units or whatnot, the lines are not sterile. They test the lines so they, so they know that they don't leak. And um, again, they dry, I don't think they purposely, the, you know, manufacturer uses dirty water or anything like that on purpose. Uh, but again, there's no way to get those lines 100% dry. So you can have a biofilm in your lines before you even, before you even open. So I know that mm -hmm. what your question, Pamela, but just to, just to let you know, even with new equipment, really important to start off with shocking. Kelly, you're muted again. Did it again, muted myself. <laughs> uh, it's my first time. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, anonymous question, great question. Uh, I use, right now I fill my ADEC bottles with city water. Should I install a water filter under my sink to fill the bottles with filtered water? And if so, any brand or kind you would like to suggest? We, we don't city like- City water, ADEC likes it, we like it. As long as your city water is a, a good quality, uh, I would suggest keep using it. Right, they're good. I, we, we don't like those in office under sink filters, but bugs do. Yeah, our Brita water filter, what was it like 60,000 CFS? Yeah. Our Brita filter is dirtier than our toilet tank water. <laughs> so fun, this is a fun story for those of you that are still sticking around. If you, the question is, why do dogs prefer to drink out of a toilet over their bowl? And the answer might be because they're good water testers. They <laughs> and they prefer, they can tell what water is better for them. So yes, biofilm can grow in a dog dish. And, uh, and we do know that, and biofilm can really grow in a Brita filter and it loves those filters that go under your sink. You can use mm -hmm. them, but you gotta treat them. You gotta, you gotta uh, replace them probably more often than you think. And test it, yeah. And test it. Uh, so great question. Uh, if you're pooling samples, if you're combining samples, again, to save cost, can you use one vial per water bottle source slash delivery unit per slash delivery unit. So uh, when do you switch a vial, basically, I think is the question. Right, I, and, and actually that's sort of almost, that was worded better than the way I worded it. You know, when we 
by one per operatory. It's really, some operatories have two water bottles. They'll have one, you know, uh, on the regular unit and then they'll have a 12 o'clock unit with a separate water bottle or the, or the assistant side will have her own water bottle. So it's really one per bottle, which is one per unit. So good question. And you probably answered it by asking it properly. Um, do you recommend mail-in for the first time after being shut down for COVID for a few months? So we have a report as evidence. Kim, great question. That is a great question. I, and my answer would be no, because I'm a cheap, I'm cheap. And I would say, and plus, if you do, so the two, two part answer, one, Let's say you're going to open on May 1st and let's, or May 4th, right? Where some people are saying May 4th. This is all optimism, but let's see. So you want to get there the week before and, and shock your water lines and then do a quick pass test. And in two days, you'll know if it passed. If you passed, I think you're good to go. If you yeah. want to do a mail-in test, you got to get there a week early. No, you got to get there 10 days early, shock it, mail it into our lab because we need seven days plus a day of shipping we'll, and we'll send you your results. Uh, that way. So I think in this case, I would go quick pass. Kelly and keeping, Kelly. Yeah. Keeping that log is great evidence. Another, another way. Um, don't, don't keep the actual quick pass. We've had people do that. You know, they'll, they'll hang on to their quick pass for, for weeks or whatnot. And they're like, man, these are really growing and they will, they'll continue to grow. So after that 72 hours, toss them, but you can take a picture of your results and upload them or just keep them that that's also helpful. And then just keep that in addition to your log and then you'll have the report that you need as evidence and as the documentation. And uh, the last thing I'd say with this, Kim, is uh, having that report as evidence. This won't be the last time you test. So you're gonna have, uh, you, you know, we like, if you're doing the quarterly quick pass, you also do a mail-in once a year. Um, so three quick passes, one mail-in, we like that, uh, just so you have that third-party verification at least once a year. Um, but I think in this case, you're good either way. Just make sure you got the, the passing results. Uh, great question. We get this question all the time. Should you read the quick pass at 48 hours or 72 hours? Kelly T, what do you, what do you tell customers that ask this question? So both. Um, so if you're, if you read them at, at 48 hours and, and you see a clear fail, um, you know, a lot of red on there, you can, you can pretty much know, Hey, I, I need to do something and, and shock my lines. Uh, but if you, if you look at them at 48 and there's, there's, there's no growth, I would, I would let them keep uh, incubating and then check them again at 72 just to make sure. Um, so, so, so both. Yeah. Check them at 48. If, if it's a clear fail, you'll know. Um, and then if you're again, if you're not, you know, if there's maybe just one dot or if there's nothing at, at 48 out, 48 hours, let them, let them incubate a, a little bit longer, check them at 72. And then you'll, you'll know for sure the, the correct answer, but you don't want to go over 72. Cause again, they'll go, they can grow mold uh, and the bacteria can keep growing. So I uh, want to make sure that you, you do check them at that 72 hours window. Carter uh, lives in Hawaii. Aloha, Carter. Hey. Aloha. I don't know. <laughs> this is just like surfs up. <laughs> oh. Sorry, Carter. I don't. Yes. I don't. Yeah. Sorry. You do a lot dorks. Of We're dorks. We're uh, um again. I'm <laughs> dumb. Uh, okay. Uh, yes, Carter sir. is asking, can I do a mail-in laboratory test? Yes. If he lives in Hawaii. Absolutely. And yeah, we have lots of customers in Hawaii. Yeah, lots. And generally that we don't have a problem getting it overnight with FedEx. No. And make sure you, you order the kit that comes with the FedEx shipping. You know, most of our right. kits, but make sure you order that and uh, it'll get, it, it usually gets to us the next day. Yeah. And then I'll just highlight that one of the coolest things about going with pro edge with the mail-in test kit, with the shipping and Kelly talked about this, but with the shipping included is that if you're in Hawaii, you don't pay more. We yeah. pay more. Because we already <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. Go uh, with the shipping. You don't pay more, Carter. If you if you go with a, a test kit that doesn't have the shipping included, you got to pay for that full amount from Hawaii, uh, which is it can get really expensive. So uh, that's one of the benefits of going with Pro Edge. Um, uh, we just uh, uh, Mike, did you want to talk about the growing mold quick pass? Kelly just kind of touched on that, but yeah, well, just I'm. Um, my, so someone said it's not red, it's something else. And if it's not red, it might be contamination that happened after 72 hours. So don't read it after 72 hours, throw it out. Or, you know, you, uh, that's the problem. And it, that could be contamination from the air and not from your water lines. So, uh, and, and when in doubt, take a picture and email it or text it to us. Yeah, yeah. So Tracy asks, 
uh, what is germicidal neutralization? I love this question. <laughs> I don't even want to know what that is. I'm like, uh, go ahead, Mike. <laughs> no. Somebody, somebody so, pl you planted that, didn't you, Kelly? Yeah, I just yeah. want to so germicidal neutralization is uh, the process. So dental has all of these uh, active low-level antimicrobials, right? Silver, iodine, um, Mike, what are some? Hexidine. Yep, all that's these pretty much it. Silver and iodine are the 90% of the tablets and straws, whether it's ICX or blue tab or Denipure. So you have all these active ingredients in the lines and in the sample that you take from your air water syringe. And so when, when it comes time to test that, in order to get accurate, reliable results, you need to neutralize that active ingredient. Otherwise, it can just kill everything and make nothing grow. And so you can think that you've got passing results and there's no bacteria in your lines. And in reality, you do. And so germicidal neutralization, again, recommended by OSAP um, to get accurate testing results, is uh, an, an important, just an important way to make sure that your test is getting you the information that you need. And so both our quick pass includes that and our laboratory test does that. Um, so I love that question, Tracy. Thanks for asking. Um, uh, what's the cost of professional testing? So laboratory test, what does that cost? Mike? A six packs of $169 suggested retail and that includes the shipping, that includes everything. Includes the consultation with Kelly. It just depends on how many units you need to test. Uh, um, and we have, uh, we have kits to, to meet whatever your needs are. So if you just need to test two, two rooms, we can, we can meet those needs. So it just depends uh, on, on how many vials you need or how many operatories you need to test. Uh, Joseph asked a great, great question. For in-lab test results, does the company save the results for us for five years? Yes. Uh, but we also recommend that you do that as well. Um, but we have them. But yes, yes. we have them. Uh, Carrie, yes, we do see you. We're seeing you. Um, Glenna, thanks for the feedback. Appreciate it. Uh, Deborah asked, can we get the quick pass through Henry Shine? Yes, we can get yes. that through any of the major dealers. Uh, Patterson, Benko, all our, all our buds. We've got lots of partners across the country, Deborah. Um, um, let's see, other good questions. Oh, wait, Wendy says, Kelly T is the best. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Talk Wendy. About. Talk about planting some feedback. <laughs> I, I told her to say that. <laughs> uh, Kelly T is the best. Um, yes. Is it okay to run the Cavitron scalar lines? My dental repair technician says do not run bleach through the Cavitron lines. Great question, Brandon. Mike? Sure. Yeah, sure. Um, and I would, uh, you know, we, we do really respect those uh, service technicians and the uh, sales reps from the dental supply companies. They've seen a lot, they know it. Um, but we also um, have seen the instructions for use from all the chair and equipment manufacturers. And so mid supply, we, you know, we, you know uh, all, all of them have, almost all of them have authorized the use of one to 10 bleach for 10 minutes as a shock protocol. Check with your manufacturer, but yeah, we listen to your service technicians. Um, they've seen a lot. Um, but, but when in doubt, go to right to the source, read the instructions right from the manufacturer. And again, uh, almost all of them have at one time authorized the use of, of uh, bleach diluted one to 10 for 10 minutes. Densply says do it every week in a Cavitron. Um, I work, Tamara asks, I work in the educational environment. So when, since we are unsure when parent, patient care will resume, what is the recommended timeline for shocking and testing prior to resuming care? Um, it, if we shock and test three weeks prior to resuming patient care, are we safe? Great question, Tamara. That is a great question. So yeah, you, what I would suggest timing it to, to where you get a passing result shortly before you resume patient care. I get that if you don't know when it is and suddenly, oh, oh, we're gonna start seeing students and patients uh, quickly. Uh, you don't have much time, but you can shock and test with blue tab and have results in 48 or 72 hours. Uh, and Karen's got a great question. Um, Karen, you talk about quarterly testing. Is this done before quarterly shocking? Mike, I love your yeah. on this. 
Yeah, and our, our answer is you want to shock on the first day of every quarter and test on the last day of the quarter and then shock the next day, whether you pass or fail. You want to shock every quarter regardless. So you want to test, shock on January 1st, use your tablet or straw and test on March 31st. If you do that and pass, you proved your water was safe for the last 90 days. If you do that four times over the course of a year, you can sleep good knowing your water was safe every day, every patient. Your patient's protected, your staff's protected, your reputation is protected. Uh, Irene has a great question. Uh, and thanks for going to our website, finding some of our resources. So there's a waterline maintenance recommendation sheet from manufacturers on your website. Yes. Uh, if I'm reading it correctly, it says Pelton and Crane shares should be shocked weekly, double exclamation mark. Yeah, so if you're not using any kind of low level antimicrobial, super important to shock weekly. Uh, that's how quickly bacteria grows uh, in your water line. So even like I mentioned earlier, even if you if you use sterile water or 100% distilled water, over just within a short amount of time, four to five days, you you can have a really high bacterial count. So um, that's why they 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 do say to shock weekly. But if you're using a tablet, using a straw, you don't need to shock your your you don't need to shock weekly. It's it's it's, it's too much. But uh, yeah, you, you, you can if you want to, but um, no need to if you're using a, an antimicrobial. And that would be our recommendation. You, you pick a shock product, do that quarterly, low-level antimicrobial, either a tablet or a straw, and that's that mm -hmm. continuous daily treatment, uh, and that way you don't have to shock weekly. Uh, but that's their minimum recommendation uh, from right. years and years ago uh, that you shock weekly. Um, Sandra asks, we use sterosyl straws, and this is a great question, Sandra. Uh, we use sterosyl straws, and it's time to change out. It's been 365 days, but we are seeing emergency patients few times a week and trying to use certain rooms. Should I empty and air purge the ops we are not using and change the straws or wait until this is over and change all at once? I'm the cheap guy. I'd say wait until it's over and then... Yeah the ones that are over that definitely are, right you remember yeah. it sounds like it sounds like sandra's doing this for the right reason she doesn't right. want to use the, the sterosyl straw more than a year right um right. which is good because they're only good for a year or two years of water whichever comes first so good good on you sandra good question but I'd, i again me i would wait until i have to I wouldn't, I wouldn't replace, I wouldn't put a straw on and let it sit there for a, a month, especially right. you know, without patient treatment. I wouldn't put a new one on until I had to. Hi, Kim Lee. Kim Lee, I don't know Hi. if this would be more of a question for Crostex, but regarding PPE for shocking, I use level three masks as part of the PPE that I wear. Do you think I should be wearing an N95 mask to shock? Mike? Shout out to you, Kimley. I mean, you are the professional shocker for sure. Uh, <laughs> she is. She's, she has learned, man. She's, she's awesome. Uh, but yeah, go ahead, Mike, if you want to take this. Oh, I was going to say, I don't, I don't think that's necessary. Necessary, no. Again, you're, uh, you're not, you know, save, save the N95s for, for, uh, for when and who needs them. Yes. She's awesome. She has got shocking down. Good for, good for her. Yeah. Um, Kimley says she uses liquid ultra product to shock. Uh, how's her results going, Kelly? You're getting better. Great, results of that liquid right, ultra. man. I mean, yeah, she's one who can definitely say we've, we've, we've done some consultations and we you know, ran in some, some, uh, into some obstacles, but overcome them because of you, Kimley, you, you do a great job. Um, would you recommend combining a tablet and a straw? No, not, not in the same operatory. <laughs> We've had people do straws in one room and tablets in another room just to test the results and see how they do. But that was just more for fun than, than anything else. Um, no, don't, don't do both. It's necessary. No. And we, there's no, no, don't mix chemicals. Jill asks, uh, do any recommendations change for more mobile or portable dental units? Not really. Uh, CDC, so there are some states that require mobile units to, to adhere to the CDC recommendations um, more specifically. Um, but Mike Kelly, in terms of protocol or anything like that, we would still recommend the same. Right. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. And actually the mobile clinics, those guys are familiar with uh, being dry for a while. Right. 
just shock. Shocking is really important, especially with those mobile units. If you're, you know, if you're emptying them out again, there's never a way to get those lines hundred percent dry. So just really shock and, and, and use a product of some sort. Um, if you're emptying them out a lot. So a, a, a really good question. I'm glad you, uh, this is anonymous, but I'm glad you asked. So what does sterile mean when you start talking about using sterile water for surgery is it distilled or purified water. Does that, does that mean sterile? No, it does not. No, you got to buy sterile water that says sterile water. Sealed. Pharmacopoeia, right? So it'll say USP sterile water. It's not, it's not that much more expensive. No. Um, it's designed for surgery and or it's designed, they're designed for many things, but use the sterile water. You can buy it in a bottle or a bag, right? Thanks for the night. Right. Um, Christina has a cool idea and a cool question. Do you re recommend adding food coloring, a food coloring drop with the bleach to make sure that you know when it goes through the line? I've tried that. With me too. It doesn't stay. <laughs> the bleach takes it over, right? It doesn't oh, work. Right. Uh, it, the bleach turns the food coloring to clear. Clear. Quickly. If so you find a way, let us know. <laughs> Here's one. Here's a tip I got from a doctor. He said, use a neon post-it note. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So like take a, not a regular post-it note, not a, not a yellow one this color, but a brightly. Right, right. And hit it with the air water syringe and the one to 10 bleach dilution will bleach it in about 30 seconds. And that's validation that the bleach is in your water lines. That's a great, great question. Cause for me, like once I smell bleach, it's all I smell. I can't tell if it's in there. So I use that, that, uh, that post-it note or just a bright colored piece of paper and it'll bleach it right away. Uh, Pamela asked, does cross like liquid ultra have the same results as diluted bleach? If they're same, wouldn't it be much more cost effective for bleach? Uh, Pamela, great question. Uh, both of those are uh, the most effective solutions based on our data. Uh, liquid ultra does have a little bit better results. Um, so if you can afford it, uh, that's going to get you the better results, but bleach the, is definitely cost effective. And I'm the cheap guy here, so I I like bleach, but I love the color, the look. Yeah, color the color. Out with the, with it takes out the human error, right? So when you know the yeah. once you see the pink, it's it's in there. But uh, yeah, I mean diluted bleach works works well. Uh, it just you got to make sure it's in there, do it correctly. But we we like the 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 pink. Um, and it removes the, the biofilm wall. Thank you guys for sticking with us. I know we still got a hundred people or so with us. Uh, we're going to get to all these questions. If we don't, and you got to go totally. Okay. Uh, you can Email again reach out, to, reach out to us and we'll answer your question. Uh, Karen says I'm using blue tabs. Is it better to leave the water in the lines overnight or purge at the end of the day? How long is water stable in water bottles with tablets? Great question, Karen. Um, so are, are we talking just on a, on a normal, like when we're not in this COVID-19 craziness. So using blue tabs, leave, it's definitely better or really using any of the tablets. So um, blue, tabs, blue tab stays active and working, killing those low levels of bacteria for 28 days. Uh, the other tablets, so ICX, Citrusol, two weeks. Um, we recommend leaving that water in the bottle because it'll it'll take care. It's a low level antimicrobial, keeping that water clean and also in your line. So during normal dur normal world, every, you know, every day if you're there working every day, we it's better to keep that water in your bottles and in your lines because it'll actively kill bacteria, keep killing bacteria while you're gone, and keep those low levels of bacteria gone uh, gone or while you're gone. Uh, Lori asked, what does R2A stand for? I'd love to answer that. And the, my answer is, congratulations, Lori, you stumped us. Because <laughs> I don't know the answer. You, Kelly, I don't know the answer. It's, so it's an it's auger. It's a type of auger. Yeah, so it's just the R2A auger it's, it's, uh, that, that we use specifically for, for dental unit water lines. So the growth medium that we use. Lori, you win something. She wins something. Can, She's she, awesome. She wins a free... Pretty quick pass, I think. Um, so yeah, an auger, is, it's basically a food for the bacteria. Right. And that, Gross medium, right. That mm -hmm. helps them uh, grow so that we can see them and measure them. Um, uh, Citrusil, or I'm sorry, Stericil straw with distilled water is better than using it with tap water? Uh, 
I can answer that one too, but yes. Kelly can. Yeah. We can all answer. Go ahead, that. Mike. Yeah, no, go ahead. They make two straws. One is for distilled water, and one is for good water that is not too hard. So te- they say test your water and buy the appropriate one. If your water is over 250 parts per million of total dissolved solids, you you got to buy. There's you got to use distilled water basically, and if you do, that, they get good results. They, that product works good with distilled water. I think it's important though that you're using a distilled water from a commercial source um, from a bacteria standpoint. So again, those filtration systems, the in-office distillers, they have a high count of bacteria a lot of the time. So um, we actually, they only get passing results about 15 or 16% of the time. So if you are, yes, Stericil, Citrusil works best with distilled water, uh, but use distilled water from a commercial source. Uh, Marilyn asked a great question. clarifying question on the dummy straw. Uh, does this do any sterilization? Does this do any treatment? Kelly? Is a company, so can it be sterilized? Is that what you mean? Can you put it in the, uh, y- y- you don't want to put it, I mean, it's just an empty take up tube. If you, you don't want to sterilize, you know, don't put it in your autoclave. It's, it's plastic or right. whatever. So right. You don't no. need to do that. It's just an empty take up tube that you're going to use to shock with. So you can use it a, a, a over and over again. If you need another one, call me. We'll, we'll send it. You add another one. And every time you shock with this, you're shocking this line. And so right. when you right. just realize it. And then um, let it dry. Of course, after, you know, you can let it, let it dry out. Uh, but yeah, you don't, don't, don't put it in your, it, it, you don't want to st- put it in your sterilizer. Right. Uh, Joanne asks, um, um, She's talking about the Cabotron manual, which recommends to shock with diluted bleach weekly. So um, we are doing lines attached to the same water supply. Any thoughts about continuing to do this over time? You follow that one, Mike? Uh, no, I'm, I'm not exactly no. sure. But I'm thinking, so Cavatron does recommend weekly shocking, but if you use a tablet, you can stretch that to quarterly, right? Shock every quarter and use your tablet every day your straw. Um, now Cavitrons do or the scalar lines do fail more often so just test you know testing yeah, to testing. Sure that you're 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 going you may have to go a little bit you may have to shock a little bit more often than quarterly but just use testing to kind of prove this but yeah a Cavitron does say shock uh, we, weekly with diluted bleach but I think you can as long as you're using a treatment of some sort with it um, you can probably push it out. Uh, Kelly how long should we flush lines with water after bleach, uh, after a shock ble- using diluted bleach or, or others? So you're going to want to, um, so you don't want to sh- flush for at least about two to three minutes. We say to start with warm water, that'll kind of help. Um, the biofilm, like I said, it's, it's a, it's a thick kind of slime layer that sticks to the sides of those lines. So I like to think of it like washing dishes. So when you're flushing that bleach solution out of your lines, if you start with warm water, it'll kind of help grab that biofilm and push it out of there. Um, but don't want your lines to stay warm. So I would do maybe two minutes of, of warm water and then fill it with cold and then flush with cold as well. Um, just so you're not letting your lines stay warm. Man. Did you mute yourself again? <laughs> Jeez. Um, Frederick asked, should piezo surgery and implant, implant uh, I don't know that word, drills system. Osteotomy. Thank you, Mike. That's 35 years experience in dental compared to. (laughs) I'm Uh, like, uh, should those systems be treated, tested and shot? Mike, what do you think? No, surgical headpieces uh, should be used. You should use sterile water from a sterile source. They should have an external water component. uh, uh, And they, uh, and you should follow the manufacturer's instructions for sterilization between procedures. All those are, those products are just like dental chairs. They are all medical devices and the manufacturer has to provide instructions that tell you how to reprocess those instruments between patients so it's safe from one patient to the next. Uh, Floretta was asking if we could show the pooled sample slide. So there you go, Floretta. Um, uh, Norma asked, what's the cost of the quick pass? Mike, you wanna take that one? Oh yeah, the four pack is $89. So you'll never pay more than $22.25 for one of these. The more you buy, the cheaper it gets. And I think the 24 pack, which is our most popular uh, size is, I think it's around $14 per, 
for te for test, and, and and occasionally it goes on promotion too. So, why? So look look for it. Ask your supplier. Sometimes they have promotions going. Like, you know. Um. Let's see. Thanks, Kim. Do you like chloride, chlorine dioxide products for shocking? So MicroClear is that uh, that's a chlorine dioxide uh, product. Um, you know, I uh, don't like to say anything bad about any product. I think it, it can probably work. Um, we definitely we, see better with see, the Liquid Ultra. Yeah, we've seen it pass. We've seen it fail. Um, test it. And... We try, you know, we, we try to, we did some testing on it and, um, we, did. we, 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 uh, we, there are customers who struggle there. Um, but, um, but we've, you know, it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm like, test, uh, <laughs> test. Test, or, test to make sure it works. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And if you want to, use it, I know you can use it, you know, a couple pumps in your, in your lines throughout or in your bottles in the day, I would just, you know, use that in conjunction with shocking with something stronger. If you like a product um, and you're wondering whether it's effective or not, the, the answer is test and test see. You, know, you can call us and we can give you some recommendations as to whether we've seen uh, which products we've seen work the best. And again, we, we like Crosslex Liquid Ultra diluted bleach uh, paired with uh, one of the tablets or the straws. Um, but test, see if every product can work well. So, uh, with any of these tests, make sure it's working because that's whatever the marketing is, whatever the sales guy says, uh, whatever, whatever the active ingredient is, all of those things are subject to what is actually happening in your practice. And so you want to test, make sure it's working, uh, have that documentation, protect your practice, know your patients are safe, sleep well at night. Um, so it, it, uh, all of the pro every single product that we've seen come into our uh, into our lab has worked and worked according to the instructions for use. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes that's because of something unique going in, in, on in the dental unit. And uh, that's why you want to have a partner like Kelly T to, to help you work through that. Um, um, can you go over one more time how long I have to flush the line before seeing patients and in between patients in normal operating circumstances? That's from CDC Pamela. says... The CDC says two minutes every morning and two, 20 to 30 seconds between patients again. And that is to, that is to stop cross contamination. It won't help mitigate biofilm development. You're dealing with water lines. Elizabeth asks, I've been told by a few equipment manufacturers not to use bleach to, sh bleach to shock water lines. What are your thoughts? Um, you know, I would listen to your to your manufacturer if they if they don't like bleach. Uh, I know ADEC isn't a fan of diluted bleach, so uh, we recommend the Liquid Ultra. Um, we like it, and a lot of manufacturers uh, other manufacturers are okay with it. So I would definitely listen to your your manufacturer uh, what what they tell you. Um, yeah, I don't want to tell you to go against what they say. Uh, Um, all right, last question, last final question. Um, can I run empty water bottle and clear the lines uh, and leave the lines empty during the week of closure? So just clarifying COVID purging, uh, Kelly T, COVID-19 shutdown and purging, what do I do? You're gonna want, yeah, you're gonna wanna empty the bottle just like you said, and then purge the lines. So during this COVID, during this extended period of, of non-use. So normally with the ICX, you can keep it in there. We, we want you to, they want you to keep it in there. But during this time, uh, we want, no matter what product you're using, what tablet you're using, empty your bottle and purge your lines, purge, purge them as dry as possible. And again, the reason being, if you, we just don't know how long this is gonna last. Uh, ICX, you can leave in the lines for 14 days. So if you're talking about uh, this anonymous question, if you're talking about uh, we just closed down for a week, we'd suggest at that point you leave it in. But if yeah. for COVID with how long it's going to potentially be, could be two weeks, could be three weeks, could be a month, could be longer, uh, we think you, you want to take that out and purge. Right. All right, guys.
good job. Amazing. Good job, Amazing. everybody. Questions. Thank Thanks. you guys for joining us. Again, if you have any troubles, reach out to Kelly T uh, um, or myself or Mike Rust. There's going to be a quick survey at the end of this. We'd love your feedback. So appreciate all of your time. 66 people still here uh, sticking through the awesome. Q &A. Really, really appreciate the dedication. Little life. <laughs> Well, they're like us now, Mike. They, yeah. they don't even water lines in their life. Yeah, we all got some time on our hands. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining us. You guys are professionals to, to do this. Appreciate it. We'll uh, see you soon. Call us if you need anything. And uh, keep on keeping on, everybody.